In my video last week where my kids and I were out in Joshua Tree watching the Perseids meteor shower, I had an image that showed a whole bunch of meteors shooting through the sky at the same time. I got a few questions about how I created that image, so I thought I would show you how you can create a similar image next time there's a nice big meteor shower. Welcome to Grant Takes Pictures. I'm Grant and I take pictures. When I was out in Joshua Tree for the Perseids Meteor Shower, I was shooting a time lapse, and you saw that time lapse in last week's video. If you haven't seen that video, go uh, click on the thing up there or up there. I think it's up on that side. Um, so go click on the link up there, check out that video. It's a, uh, it's a pretty good video. I, I was really happy with the way that video turned out last week. A little bit different for me. Not as much photography, but I liked uh, you know, showing my kids and I out there in the desert. So go uh, enjoy that video and you'll see the time lapse that I have in there. And I set that time lapse up um, the way I would normally set up a time lapse or even if I was just taking uh, astro photos. The exposures were about 20 seconds long, um, as uh, wide as I could go. I, I have a 24 millimeter lens um, on my camera. And so I was using my 24 millimeter at f2.8 at 20 seconds and uh, my ISO was whatever I needed it to be to capture enough detail in the stars. And I had my, my remote shutter release taking a picture um, every 22 seconds. So it would, the shutter would be open for 20, close for two, and then it would open back up again for the next uh, picture. So I let my camera go all night long until the battery died. It was going from about 9 p.m. until about three in the morning. So I had six hours of photos and that ended up being about 1,400, 13 or 1,400 photos. And so that's how I captured all the images. And now when I uh, brought them home, I hopped on into Lightroom and we're gonna go check them out here in Lightroom. So here I am in Adobe Photoshop. And as you can see, I have all my images imported. I have 1,317 of them um, from this time-lapse series, but I'm not interested in all of them. I'm only interested in the ones that have meteors in them. But before I get there, I'm going to edit these photos so they look the way I want them to. I'm going to just take this first one, go to the development settings and edit it the way that I would any other astro photo. Uh, I have done a video on how to edit astro photos in the past. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link right up here. Um, I'll also link it down below and you can check out that video if you want to know how I edit these for Astro Photos. I'm not going to spend all my time on that. But once I have done that, I'm going to sync the settings for all of the images. I'm going to go back to my library, select everything, and then go to Development Settings, Sync Settings, Check All, and hit Synchronize. Um, I've already done that for this, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, but once the settings are how you want them, the next task is to go through each photo and start looking for meteors. So I'm just going to come here, load each photo. Um, and you got to make sure that like this photo has this nice streak here. It has another small streak here, but if you go back and forth, um, between a few images, you can see that those streaks persist between uh, frames, they just move. That means those are airplanes and not meteors. So you have to go through and try to find one that, um, that just has a meteor where the streak is only in one image. And I've actually already done that for these images. I'm not going to go through all 1,317 for you. Um, so, I have flagged them all and I found um, 26 images that had the, uh, the meteor that I was interested in or the meteors that I was interested in. 
So for instance, on this image, you can see one right here. On this image, I don't know where there's one, but I'm sure it is somewhere here. I'm sure there's one in there somewhere. Um, in this image, you can see one right here. And, um, you know, so I'm going to take these images and their settings are all the same. And normally what I would do here is edit in Photoshop open in layers. But with 26 images, uh, Lightroom and Photoshop don't uh, like one another enough to open that many images all at once in one image. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to export um, as full size TIFFs. So I'm putting this into my on my desktop in a subfolder called Meteor, uh, Meteor Merge. And then down um, here at the file settings, I'm going to say TIFF, no compression, uh, Adobe RGB, and then I'm going to hit export. And that gives me a uh, a list of 26 files on my in a folder on my desktop and then I can come into Photoshop and I'm going to open up these files and there's actually one of these that I want to start with so this image here is uh, the one I'm going to use as my base I like the stars I like the foreground it's not totally pitch black but it's not too bright either and there's not that many clouds obscuring the, uh, the stars. So I'm gonna start with this one. So the image we wanna use as our base layer is this image 7324. So we're gonna to go to Photoshop and open that up and now we have it as our background layer here in Photoshop. And now we're gonna start building up all of the meteors on top of it. So let's uh, start by going to File and then place embedded and just start adding your images. And it will add it here as a layer and we have this nice big meteor right here. So before we start you know, just trying to get this meteor, I want all of these meteors to look like they're coming from the radian. In a meteor shower, all the meteors look like they come from a, a specific point in the sky. And for the Perseids meteor shower, um, they look like they come kind of from right here in the sky. But obviously, over the night, the sky moves, the stars move, or we rotate under the stars, uh, to be more precise. But for us sitting here, and to my camera, it looks like the stars are moving. And we need to fix that so the uh, stars are um, all in the same place for all of these images. So we're going to take this image I just uh, opened up on, um, you know, on a new layer and we're going to reduce the opacity to 50% and we want to rotate the stars. So we go to edit, transform, rotate. Now if you just start rotating it the image rotates right around the center, but that's not where the, the sky rotates. The sky rotates around the North Star. Um, so we're going to undo that rotation and we need to change the point where our, um, where our image is rotating. So click this little button here, this little check mark, and you get this cross. Now you wanna move this cross to the North Star which I do believe is right there in this image. And now when you rotate it, it rotates around that point. And the goal is to line up all the stars. Ah, there we go. I'm not quite, I didn't quite pick the right spot. So we're gonna go back, but you can start to see how those are the same and those are the same. So I need to go back and change the spot that um, I picked here. Maybe it's that star that's the North Star. Now if we come up, we don't need to get this exact, but you can start to see how these stars line up. So that looks pretty good right there. 
And now if we bring the opacity back up to 100%, Meteor is right here on the edge of the image. But that's okay. So what we need to do is we need to open up a new mask. So add a layer mask, and we're gonna fill the entire thing in on this image in black because we, uh, we wanna mask out everything except for the meteor itself. So we do that, but obviously now we can't see anything. We need to be able to see the meteor. So let's um, disable the mask just while we draw on it. So we still have it selected. See the, this white box is still around the mask even though it is turned off. So if we start doing things, in this case, I want a white pencil and let's go with an eight pixel wide um, pencil. Make sure it's white and we're gonna zoom in as much as we can on the, uh, the meteor itself. So here we are, we have this meteor, and so you can see the eight pixel wide brush, or the eight pixel wide pencil, covers the entire meteor itself. So we're just gonna start here, and we're gonna draw a line on the mask layer, right over the meteor. Just gonna keep on going until it ends. And now, if we re-enable the mask, we still have the meteor, but we have our normal base image. So there's that first meteor done. And now we just do that for all of the images. And I'm not gonna sit here and uh, you know, drag you through each one. There's a lot of these, but let's uh, fast forward. And um, once I have all of the layers in, we'll talk about what we do next. It is about two hours later. I've been at this for quite a while and um, I have all of my layers loaded and each of them are masks. So if you turn on and off certain layers, see so yeah, if I turn off this layer, there's a meteor right here. So turn it back on and the meteor shows back up. So you can see each layer has, uh, you know, basically one meteor on it and as I turn them on and off, the meteors disappear and come back. And looking at this picture, I'm not as uh, enthusiastic about it as I was hoping I would be. The meteors just don't stand out that much. And, um, you know, I, I showed this to a friend and they kind of joked these small, dull, unimpressive meteors were you know, kind of how they experienced, um, you know, an actual meteor shower when they're watching it. You know, you sit there for hours on end and every 90 seconds, two minutes, a meteor comes by and then you just sit there and wait for a while longer. And, you know, it's just not as, uh, as exciting as you might hope. Um, and, you know, I kind of joked back in return that, uh, you know, I'm just trying to present truth through my artwork that I'm giving you the, uh, you know, the real feeling of what it's like he had a uh, meteor shower. But I want these meteors to actually pop and, you know, be uh, bright and vibrant on the page. And we can do that a little bit in Photoshop. So I'm going to select all of these layers with the meteors on them, and I'm going to create a copy. Here we are, duplicate layers. Just hit OK, and now we have all these copies. So every layer has two layers now. And right here, instead of normal mode, we are going to come down here and do screen. And as you can see, here's normal. The meteors look like they did before. They're just not that vibrant, but you come down to screen and they get so much brighter. And what screen does, it kind of multiplies the brightness of the two images, of the two layers um, on top of one another and um, makes them just stand out more. And now as we look at it, there's actually a couple of these that I don't like, um, this one here and this one here, because they're not going in this, 
you know, out from the radian right here. You know, there all of these other ones kind of point back to a single point, but these two don't. So I'm going to go through, let's see. Oh yeah, and this one does the same. So I had already turned off that one. So there's that one there. I'm going to turn that one off. And let's go figure out which one is, which these two are. And as I do this, so that one, so 70, 57, we're going to come down here, 70, these are not in any sort of order. There we go, 70, 57. So turn that one off. But as I'm turning on and off each of these, uh, each of these copied layers, you can see how the the meteor itself changes and how much brighter it gets. Let's just find this last one. There we go. 7390. That's the one we want to turn off. So 7390. And that right there is really our final image. So to create an image like this, you know, first we have to go through, take a whole bunch of images throughout the night, capture as many meteors as we can, and then you know, find those images, add them all as layers in one image, rotate the layers so they um, all the stars line up, and then uh, clone out everything except for the meteors on the images, and then duplicate those layers, set them to screen, and that's all we have to do. So there we have the image that uh, I created for last week's video. Obviously it took quite a long time to uh, actually do. Um, it took me three hours doing this and I'd already done it once. So, um, you know, the second time still took three hours. This is not a hard process, but it's a pretty long and time consuming process. You know, it creates though wonderful images that make it feel like you're actually in this meteor shower. There's a few things that I would probably want to try differently. Uh, I, I really like this image, but there's uh, many different ways you can try to take an image like this. For one thing, the foreground in this image is pretty dark, and I have some images from later in the night where the foreground is illuminated by the moon. And I tried some of those out and I thought they looked a little bit fake. I couldn't get them to look the way I would like. And so I, uh, I stuck with the darker foreground. But I think next time I try this, I'm gonna try capturing the meteors while the moon is out. It makes it harder to actually see the meteors themselves, but uh, you know, see if that might work. And then, um, you know, obviously in this image, I was facing the radian. I was facing the place where the meteors are coming from in the sky. And that makes it so the meteor streaks themselves are really short. Um, if you turn around and put your back towards the median, the meteor streaks streak across the sky much, much longer. And I think that would make an interesting picture um, just to have these longer streaks across the image. So next time there's a meteor shower, I'm going to try that. Um, and next time there's a meteor shower, I hope you go out and try to capture some images like this as well and show me what you get. Um, I would love to see it. So I hope you have found this uh, video useful and interesting. If you have, hit that like button below. Uh, hit subscribe if you wanna see more uh, videos about uh, me going out, taking pictures and uh, both the adventures I get on and the uh, way I take pictures and how I edit them afterwards. So until next week, have a wonderful time. Goodbye.